So in Nola Life, uh, you play a character, Mr. Uh, Mr. Green, am I correct? Yes. Tell us about Mr. Green. Well, some would say he's an awful man. <laughs> and some would say, hey, you know, he's a very strict um, individual that really we care. But I think that there's a lot of dysfunctional things about Mr. Green that he's not aware of. I think one of them is that he, um, he has an encounter with a, a kid that's, that's gay. And um, he really dislikes this kid. But when you find out in the film, which I will not uh, expose, that there are some things about there's some things about him that are uh, there's some things about him that are uh, are hidden in his life is why he has this this hatred this hatred towards this individual which you will find out and um, which are not valid but he has gone through some things in his life so um, he has a deep um, uh, I guess a deep hatred for for that situation but not just that. Even the character that uh, Amir plays, um, there's some things about Amir's character that he doesn't like as well. But, but he doesn't want to um, deal with the fact that Amir has changed his life and that he is a new person. Sometimes Mr. Green, he won't forgive. He's not a person of forgiveness, you know. And hopefully in this particular uh, show, along the way, he will break down and we can see this forgiveness about him. He's one of those type of hardcore guys that his way, no way. So, how was it playing, Mr. Green? You know, I, I played some some brutal characters in my life. You know, uh, and, and from drug dealers to, 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 to cops and robbers and whatever the case may be. But this was kind of hard because it, because I had to actually um, just like kids. You know, and I had to treat them very brutal. You know, and to do that, that's acting. You know, if it's not in you, and especially if you if you love children. You know, and your whole thing is about trying to, to protect them. But to be able to play a role like that and not for that to be nowhere in your spirit, it's a, it was a very hard role to portray. Yeah. So in one of the scenes, uh, you, uh, you call out this gay kid and uh, you really get on him a whole lot. And Was that pretty tough? Yeah, it was really tough because, see, um, I, I actually have, I have a lot of gay friends, a lot of gay friends, and um, and, and, and when, you, when you look at a situation like that, it's a touchy situation now, you know? It's touchy because of the way society is now, and you don't want just not yet to be judged in any certain situation that's between God and, and, and our personal relationships. So to have to, to call him a homosexual, faggot, queer punk, you know, I can imagine how that must have hurt that kid, you know, when he probably, at this particular time in their life, a young kid through the time of his life, when there's chaos about being gay and all these different situations, it must be hard for him to understand the language that was being speak, spoken to him by uh, a prominent uh, teacher. Right. So do you feel as though that this film, uh, this webisode series, will really have an impact on... Uh, do you think this webisode series will really have an impact on on, on, on on kids? I would truly hope so, you know? I would truly hope so, based on, uh, at least from Amir's uh, aspect of his life and what he's gone through, and for him to come back and say, hey, you don't need to go through this anymore. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm, I'm that, quote unquote, I'm that Jesus for you for the moment, you know? Uh, I'm the one that said, I've been through it. Let me tell you, let me show you how not to go through it. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you where the streets I've been in. And you don't need to go through that. Because a lot of times, you know, we become a product of our environment. You know, the traits of the family, the tendencies of the kid, generational curse. And if we can stop that, somebody can come along and stop that. You know, I say, okay, fine. But being on the school board myself, in the school system, I find that a lot of, when I see the parents, actually when I see the kids in high school, then I see the kids in junior high school, then when I see their parents, I can say, oh, I can see why these kids are like they are. Because a lot of the parents are kids. So we need to hopefully have these kids that our parents grow up to be women and adults, you know? Yeah, well, looking at the webisode, I, I believe that's that's the point that Amir is trying to to convey that it's some under under some underbelly stuff that's going on in these kids' lives and they're just not acting out. It's something else that's going on with them. So uh, say it again, I'm sorry. I was saying that Amir is trying to point that out in the in the webisode series that these kids are just not crazy. There's some external issues that's going on. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of family things. I mean, the kids can only react to what they see and what they hear and what's around them. You know, it's impossible to, 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 to plant a bad seed and it comes out a good seed, good fruit. You know, you plant a bad seed, you're going to get a bad fruit. You plant a good fruit seed, you're going to get a good fruit. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's where you are. And we have to be able to, to recognize. I was, I was speaking to a group of ministers the other day. And we were just talking about a, a project that I have called A Hat Is Not Enough, which means a condom is not enough. And um, we were basically talking about how it is important, it is imperative that the family, before, before they go home, before the kids leave their home that morning, it's almost like that breakfast in the morning, you get that nice breakfast. Before you walk out, you want to make sure your kid is fed. I tell them, make sure they, get, they, they should be fed with some word of, of, of encouragement or a prayer before they leave, because once they leave that door, you know, we know that there are no prayers in school and all these different things. So you're dealing with different cultures and all kind of stuff that's going on out there. So you need to make sure whatever you got to do with your kids, you tighten that kid up before they leave that door. And that and that's enough uh, uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E to bring them back home. You know, before they get home that after school, because they they need that. So we need to as as, as fathers and mothers and grandmothers and brothers and sisters, we need to encourage each other in that household. You know. That's what's going to carry us when you get out that door. I want to thank you for your time. We appreciate you, Clyde Jones. Well, I appreciate it, and I, you know, I, I know the film is going to do great. I'm waiting for it. I'm, I'm waiting for the, the the episodes to turn into episodics, the episodics to turn to uh, 100 episodes, so we can be syndicated all over the world. Because let me tell you something: it's not just about when you look at this African American show, because it's, it's predominantly African American. But this is a situation that's universal. You know what I'm saying? We just see it an African American side of the story that it's a universal story. So when you get the chance to see it, you will see yourself. I'm looking at you white, or yellow, Jew, black, whatever color you may be. You're going to see yourself in it or somebody that you know. You know what I'm saying? So take heed, look at it, because it's important to watch it. And it's not we're not doing it as something to glorify. We're doing it as something to 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 rectify. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Clyde.